from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Till the sun shines, Nelly. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. There's an old saying God made the country, man made the town. And in tonight's play, Wait Till the Sun Shines, Nelly, we will tell you the story of a man who fell in love with a small town and planned his whole life around it, but forgot that other people make plans, too. As our stars of this very moving comedy drama from 20th Century Fox, we have the original star, David Wayne and Gene Peter. Now, wait till the sun shines, Nelly, starring David Wayne as Ben and Gene Peters as Nelly. <laughs> was 1896. We'd been married almost five hours, Nellie and I. We were on a train now, going to Chicago. It was night, raining. Ben, you hear what the train wheels are saying? They're saying, Chicago, Chicago. Oh, Ben, I never dreamed I could be so happy. Well, the way you keep looking out that window, you can't see anything, honey, just blackness and rain. I don't care. For once, I'm traveling. And even if I can't see, I can look. Oh, Ben, I love you. Put your hat on, honey. My hat? Yeah, you heard the conductor. Next stop's to Illinois. We're getting off, Nellie. But we're going to Chicago. But right now, we're getting off at Illinois. But what for? Well, it's a surprise. Come on, honey. We'll see about our baggage. Yes, I had a surprise for Nellie. It included a ten-minute walk through the rain over to Main Street. Ben, what did you say this whistle stop was called? To Illinois. It's just a little town, honey, but it's... When's the next train out of here? Mm, about midnight. Not much further, Nellie. Just down the block. I count slowly to ten, and we'll be there. One, two, three. I can't see a thing with this umbrella in front of my face. Yeah, I bet this rain's good for the crop. Well, I'm glad it's good for something. We're here, Nellie. Now. Hang on to my arm. Close your eyes. Why? What's there to see? You just stand here while I light the lamp. All right. Open your eyes and take a look. Why, it's a barber shop. Not just a shop, Nellie. You see that sign on the window? Professor Van Halper's tonsorial parlor. Oh, no. You didn't, Ben. You didn't. It's all new, Nellie. Everything's new. Now, look over here. You see this door? Now look where it leads to. This is where we're going to live, Nellie. And it's all ready for us. It's our home. Our home and our life. Chicago isn't in it? That's right. New York, that isn't in it either? No, no, but this is the way ahead, Nellie. You wait and see. But I guess I've got to. My honeymoon. I never thought I'd spend my honeymoon in a barber shop. Oh. What's better than this? A business of our own? A fine town to grow up with? I'll tell you what's better, what you promised me. You said you'd take me to Chicago. You've traveled, you've seen things, but I've been no place, I've seen nothing. Nellie. Oh, hold me, Ben. Hold me. Ben, uh, tell me the truth. You didn't buy this place. You only rented it, didn't you? Uh, rented? Uh, sure, sure, Nellie. That's all. Just, just rented. No, oh, when you kiss me, I guess it doesn't make much difference where I am. But keep kissing me. I aim to practice it constantly. <clears throat> Who are you? I guess you didn't hear me come in. Welcome to our city, Professor. I'm Ed Jordan, hardware and farm implement. Uh, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Helper. Magnificent, beautiful, and just what we need. Just your shop, that is. Ben, I, I'll go on in. Good night, Mr. Jordan. Ed's the name. <laughs> well, Professor, how about a nice easy shave? Well, huh? I wasn't aiming to open until morning. I, I'll have to heat up the water. Take your time. I got nothing else to do but go home to the wife. <laughs> you you all right, Nellie? Fine, Ben. Yeah, where are you from, Professor? Well, now you name it, and that's where I've been. I've been a tramp barber up till now. You all 
like that? Uh, fine, Nellie, fine. Say, what's the matter with you two? Uh, nothing, why? <laughs> seem kind of nervous, don't you? Well, sir, we, uh, we got married this evening. This, e- this evening? Well, why didn't you tell me? I'll let you shave me in the morning. Probably be safer anyway. Oh, no, I can No, no, no. I wish you every connubial bliss, Professor. Well, thank oh, you. Oh, and put out the light. The summon sound might not be as sensitive as I am. <laughs> you know, I think you're right. Good night, Ed. Nelly? It's all right, honey. He's gone now. Hey, where are you? I'm... I'm here. Oh, Nelly, you're not still mad at me, are you? Maybe. Well, you're just tired, honey. I'm not tired. I'm wondering. Now, I, I know I promised to take you to Chicago and all those other places, and I'm still promising, but... Honey, honey, you've got to go to those places at the right time. Well, what's wrong with now? Well, when I take you to Chicago and New York City and Paris, France, uh, I want to take you in style, show you everything the best way. Well, just so you're with me. That's all that counts. And if you don't like the Illinois, okay. Tomorrow morning, we'll go to Chicago. Not the way I want to go, but we'll, we'll go. I guess it, it does take time and planning. And I'll wait a little while. I'm sorry I got mad at you. Oh, Ben, I love you so much. The next day, the barber shop was crowded from morning till night. I met some fine men, and I cut their hair and I shaved their whiskers, and while they waited their turn, they played poker and cracked jokes and enjoyed themselves like a man should in a barber shop. I don't mind losing, boys. Just tell me how much we're playing for. Well, it's a five-cent limit, Doc Thomas. Oh. Uh, nobody gets hurt in my place. Well, what about the customers you shave? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you worry, Mr. Mayor. I've never so much as... I just thought I'd look around town, Ben. I'll be back in an hour, dear. Well, I, uh, I apologize, gentlemen, but my wife Nellie is new to the barber game. She doesn't know women aren't allowed in the shop. Oh, that's all right, Professor. Nellie, huh? That's a mighty pretty name. And a mighty pretty wife, Professor. Real pretty. Thank you, Mr. Oliphant. Yes, sirree. This is a good day for Seville, Illinois. Professor, we're mighty glad to have you here. <laughs> That was a championship day for my shop, over $20. But more than anything else, I knew I was in the right town. The first year wasn't easy, but Nellie seemed content enough. I joined the volunteer fire department, and I played the trombone in the town band. On the night of our first wedding anniversary... Oh, Ben, you're just crazy, that's all. Rushing me out of the house, and the supper dish is still on the table. Well, we couldn't keep the horse waiting, honey. I rented this rig by the hour. Ben, what are we stopping here for? Oh, nothing much. Uh, <clears throat> new family I want you to meet. Uh, they just moved in. Ben, my oh. hair, I look a mess. Oh, we'll only stop by for a minute. Now, who do you know way out here? Hey, house kind of dark, isn't it? Doesn't look like anybody's home. Good. Come on, Ben, let's go. Oh, well, as long as we're here, I might as well knock it. Welcome, my friends. I bid you welcome. What? Oh, I'm Mr. Jordan. What are you doing out here? Surprise! Surprise! She doesn't know what to say. Well, do you like it, Nellie? Isn't it wonderful? Well, I, I just don't understand. It's our new home, Nellie. Yours and mine. Turn on the light, somebody. Give us some light. Pretty beautiful, huh, Mrs. Halford? Taking you for a drive, and we move everything in here. Lock, stock, and barrel. Give her a glass of cider before she faints from sheer happiness. Let's start the music. Come on, we want to dance. <laughs> Well, Nellie, still in a state of shock? I guess I am, Mr. Jordan. <laughs> you dance like a feather. Do I? I was expecting a different kind of surprise, like, <laughs> well, like going to Chicago, maybe. Well, if that husband of yours is fool enough not to take you, just give me the word. <laughs> Why, Mr. Jordan. <laughs> It was a wonderful party. Folks talked about it for weeks. Nellie and I settled down in our new home. A few months later, I took on a helper, a porter and shoeshine man. He'd been in the U.S. Cavalry, and his name was Trooper. But Trooper wasn't our only newcomer. Our baby boy arrived. Then Alper Jr., the 14th child born in Seville, Illinois. Everything was going fine. But then they sank the battleship Maine down there in, in Cuba.
evening, Mr. Ben. I ain't late, am I? Oh, no, you're right on time, Trooper. Here he is. Here's a big boy. <laughs> oh, 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 my, my, my. Look at that little man. I'll watch after him fine, Mr. Ben. Mrs. Halper and I will be at uh, Burgess. Going to be a mighty fine party out here. Uh, you tell her yet, Mr. Ben, about enlisting? Uh, well, uh, no, no, I, uh, I want to surprise her. What's the prize now, Ben? Nellie. I don't know how it's possible, but every day you get prettier. Do you like my new dress? Well, I'm not looking at anything but you. You've never been so beautiful. Well, thank you. Now, wait a minute. What's that stuff on your mouth? Lip rouge. I've seen it on lips before. Take it off, Nellie. No. This is the first time we've ever been invited to the Burgess, and I want to look like the other women. Not the kind that put paint on their lips. <laughs> well, what's funny? Just now when you kissed me. What? Look in the mirror. You look just like a clown. Uh, <laughs> comes off, huh? Well, that's one way to keep tabs on a fellow. Use a handkerchief. And hurry up, dear. We don't want to be late. Mommy, now take good care of the baby, yeah. Trooper. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, me and him are old friends, Miss Nellie. <laughs> good night, darling. Be a good boy. Ben, get my coat, will you, dear? Daddy, the Your daddy and his surprises. Oh, he's the one who learns slow, ain't he, boy? My, my. <laughs> I had a special reason for wanting to be at that party. I had something important to talk over with Mr. Burge. And you're leaving tomorrow, huh, Ben? That's right, Mr. Burge, training camp. And just in case anything should happen to me, well, I'm hoping you'd look after things. Executor of your estate, is that it, Ben? I don't have much, Mr. Burge, but I want to leave everything to Nellie, except in the corner lot. I, I want to leave that for the boy. About that lot, I'll give you $500 if you want to sell. Wow! Hey, this town sure is coming along. Real estate's the backbone of the country. Well, I, I just can't sell it, Mr. Burge. It's, it's sort of something inside me. I love this town. The land grows, deepens in worth. It's kind of exciting. And, well, I can't sell. Sure, Ben. Sure. Uh, one thing more. I, I don't want Nellie to know that I own the shop. Not unless uh, something happens, she that is. doesn't know. No, not about the lot either. About the house. She's, uh, well, she thinks we're renting. But, Ben. Well, I have my reasons, Mr. Burge. Oh, sure, Ben. Now let's get Lloyd Slocum in here and we'll draw you off a will. Nellie? Not all alone. Now don't tell me Ben's deserted you. Hello, Ed. No, Ben's in the study with Mr. Birch. Good. Here, I brought you some champagne. Oh, just what I've been waiting for. Wonderful stuff. Where's Bessie at? Oh, she's somewhere around. Fine woman, Bessie. <laughs> The champagne. It tickles. Now, why don't they invent champagne that... Well? Ed Jordan, if you ever do that I again, I... I don't know what you're so excited about. All I did was kiss you. And what can a man think of a married woman that allows him to? If it's you and me, Nellie, then I think it's great. Well, wipe your lips. I'm wearing rouge. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. If Bessie should see me now... I'm more worried about Ben. <laughs> How's this? Just go away, Ed. You find Bessie and let me alone. Sorry I was so long, honey. Been having a good time? Oh, a wonderful time. You want to dance this one with me? Oh, yes. Ben, wait. While we're alone. Yeah? Is something wrong, Ben? You... You got something on your mind? No, no, nothing, dear. Not a thing. Say, I'm sorry about what I said about your lip rouge. Oh, You've taken it off. Yes. Yes, I have. Well, you didn't have to. Well, I don't want to wear it anymore, Ben. Not till you come back from the war. Back from the... Nellie, how'd you know? That was my big surprise. Nobody can keep a secret in this town. Nellie, I, ju I just had to... I know. And I'm so proud. And I'm trying to be brave. Well, don't you worry about me now. Well, it's, it's not just you, Ben. I've got a surprise, too. We're going to have another baby. Nellie, you should have told me. Like you always tell me things. Ben, when the lease is up on the barber shop, let's talk about it before you renew it. Promise? Sure, sure. As soon as I get back from the war. I'm sorry, Nellie, but it's all on account of how I love you so much. I love you too, Ben. Don't ever forget that, no matter what happens. Come on. I still want to dance. The Army 
sent me to Georgia, and the nearest I got to being a hero was clipping other heroes' heads. I was the camp barber. I was still a camp barber when our baby girl arrived six months later, and my chances of getting home grew slimmer and slimmer. Come on, Nellie. Evening, Ed. Well, any word from Ben lately? Oh, yes. Nothing new, though. I, uh, I didn't see Bessie in church tonight. No, Bessie's home. Bad attack of the grip. Oh, there seems to be a lot of it around. Uh-huh. Are uh, you alone, Nellie? Yes. Well, I'll walk home with you. Oh, no, it's just a short way, Ed. Don't trouble. No trouble at all. When's Ben getting back? Well, according to his letters, not for some time. You, uh, you want to go straight home? Yes, of course. Troopers with the children, I promise you. I'm going to Chicago next Wednesday. Are you? On business. And pleasure. Oh? To a pretty woman like you, Sir Illinois, must become pretty dull. How'd you like to go along? With you? We take different trains. No. Oh, you'd love it, Nellie. After all, you owe yourself something, don't you? You'd go shopping all day, and at night you could go to the music halls and... Mrs. Helper! Mr. Burge? I missed you at the church. I, I wanted to see you. Oh? Evening, Ed. Evening, Mr. Burge. Well, Mrs. Helper, I can sell the barber shop in a quick deal for $3,000. Cash on the line. Sell the barber shop? That's a mighty good price. Ben owns the barber shop? I wish you'd send him a telegram and tell him I've got to have a yes or no before the end of the week. Well, good night, Mrs. Helper. Ed? Good night, Mr. Burge. You didn't know he owned the shop? No. <laughs> sure like Ben to keep things to himself. Exactly like Ben. Ed, I've changed my mind. Walk home with me. I want you to. Thank you, Nellie. There. You see what I've done, Ed? Ben's strong box. I've opened it. I've smashed it open. No, now, now, wait a minute. What about Trooper? Where is he? Trooper's gone. I sat him home. Look at it, Ben. All Ben's papers, all his private papers. So private his own wife couldn't see Nellie, it. Nellie, all that stuff belongs to Ben. It belongs to me, too. Well, I don't think Ben's going to like what you're doing. Well, I like what I'm doing. When the lease is up, we'll talk about it, won't we, Ben? We'll decide what we're going to do, won't we, Ben? What's got into you, Nellie? And this house. Look, we own this house, too. Well, what's wrong with owning your own home? Nothing. Nothing you'll ever understand. And this paper, plot 42, paid in full. We even own a corner lot in the cemetery. I'm going to live and rot and die in this two-bit town. He doesn't care about me at all. He, he's lied to me all the time. Ben's just planning for the future, Nellie. Well, I'm going to have some future, too. If you go get Trooper, tell him to come back here. Tell him he's going to live here while I go to Chicago. Now, Nellie, you better listen to me. Do as I say, will you? Do as I say. Sure, Nellie. Sure. Three days later, my commanding officer sent for me. It was late at night. I couldn't imagine what he wanted me for. I, uh, have bad news for you, son. You're, uh... Your wife was killed today in a railroad accident in Chicago. Oh, that's impossible, sir. There must be some mistake. We live in Chicago. Uh, I'm terribly sorry, Halper. You can leave for home at once. I've recommended a discharge. Trooper was waiting for me at the station. Just Trooper. Oliphant, he told me to take the stalk in and fetch you home, Mr. Ben. Thanks, Trooper. The babies? No, oh, they're fine, sir. Mrs. Slocum's got them to her house till you're ready to take them. Well, we'll get them now. We'll take them home now. Yes, sir. They kind of don't know yet what's happened. Well, Mr. Ben, I just don't know how to tell you this. Tell but... me what. But you're going to hear it sooner or later, so I well... don't Mr. Ed Jordan, sir, he was killed in the same train wreck. Miss Nellie and Mr. Jordan, they went away together. I'll kill you. You say that again and I'll kill you. It won't do you no good to hit me, Mr. Ben. I've told you the truth. Just get my children. Just give me my children. Yes, sir. He 
in just a moment, we will continue with Act Two of the Hollywood Radio Theater. You probably remember when the waves of the North Sea burst through Holland's dikes and turned the little country into a land of terror. It was Western Europe's worst flood disaster. More than 1,400 people were killed, and over 60,000 were made homeless. The property loss was greater than that suffered during World War II. But America answered the call from the Dutch people. Within just a few hours, United States Army helicopters were evacuating hundreds from the danger areas. Mercy planes filled with blankets, coats, shoes, and food brought quick relief in the emergency. Among the many who contributed was the 82nd Airborne Division. They remembered the courage and the help displayed by the Dutch people when they parachuted into Holland in 1944. This one unit collected nearly 20,000 pounds of clothing and over $12,000 in cash for relief in the flooded country. Now, there was no official drive behind this operation. It emerged right from the heart, a spontaneous, genuine reaction to a country struck by disaster. It proved once more that in the hour of need, people will reach across borders and oceans to help their fellow men. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Wait Till the Sun Shines Nelly, starring David Wayne as Ben and Gene Peters as Nelly. <laughs> remember very little of what happened after the funeral. They tell me I was drunk for two weeks. But the barbershop stayed open and men came in to talk, to play poker, and to wonder about me. Julia. Saw a trooper this morning. Said the kids are fine. Don't know what they do without trooper. Ben won't let anyone even see him. Yeah, my wife and I went up to the house twice. Wouldn't let us pass the door. The trooper says he's burned up everything in Ellie's clothes, pictures, everything. Just burned them up. Yeah. If I'd been in his place, I wouldn't have come back at all. I called on Ed's wife yesterday. She said she thought something about moving away, but she's changed her mind. She's staying. She and the uh, little girl. How old's the little girl, Doc? Edie. Oh, about the same as Ben's boy, I think. Yeah, just about the same. Well, are we going to play poker or just... Yeah. Well, 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 look, it's Ben. Uh, He's coming in. Uh, oh, uh, hello, Ben. We were just talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, right. Come on, ben. sit down and join us. Just a little friendly mm -hmm. poker, Ben. I want to be accommodated. I want a six-foot hog weighing 170 pounds to get on his feet and bring his fist with him. Oh, Any of you. Come on. Anybody that's man enough to raise a beard, I'll take it off without a razor. Oh, I'd rather play cards, Ben. I'm not fighting any battles for Ed Jordan. Bunch of yellow bellies, all of you. Bunch of yellow bellies. Oh, no, uh, man, uh, let me handle this. The rest of you go on. Go on out the back door. Right. Come on, come on. Oh, now, what'd you do that for? Yes, Ed Jordan's shaving mug. My first customer, a good omen, they call it. I'll smack it off! I'll take a whole place apart! Professor, you're sensational. Ill-advised, but sensational. But I'd like to remind you that you, too, are a public servant. See, I'm the mayor, and you're the barber. And the mayor needs a shave. Get out! Now, come on, Ben. Preserve us our dandruff den. Spare your salon until you shaved me. For the last time, Ben, will you quit breaking up your hair store? Okay. You want to shave? Yes. I'll shave you. I'm drunk, but I'll shave you. Thank you. You think I don't know what I'm doing, don't you? You just keep that lather out of my ears. Well, big mouth, slurk them. I thank you. You're getting the last shave in Professor Ben Halper's tonsorio power. A great honor. Let's hope I don't slip. Oh, just one thing, Ben, before you start this operation. Now, look, you're a barber, not a man. Why, you couldn't cut Ed Jordan's throat if he sat right here in this chair. I guess you're right. Drunk or sober, you'll give me a good shave. I'm funny. I'm something to laugh at. That's why the quicker I leave, the better. No, Ben, no, no. Don't you believe it. We love you. I love you. You just stand by your chair where you belong. You look them straight in the eye. If you stay, they'll respect you. Now get to work. Razor all right? Razor's fine, Ben. You still got it. Still got that velvet touch. Lloyd was right. I stayed, and they respected me. And the years went by. Hey, Mr. Ben, hear that? 
That was 12 o'clock midnight. Happy New Year, Mr. Dan. Happy New Year, Trooper. The children, you going to wake them? No. Why should I? Well, it's sort of a privilege to live in two centuries, Mr. Ben. Is it? Uh, Mr. Ben, I, I found this in the Bible I was reading. Here. It's a picture of Miss Nellie. Bible? I thought you couldn't read. Well, I can't. But there's a few words I can pick out. Like God, heaven, and Jesus, and forgive. Makes me feel good just fine in the view I know. She had this picture taken on her birthday. Mm -hmm. I saw the day she left, Mr. Ben. She wasn't going to stay away. It was mostly on account of you didn't take her into your confidence. You didn't let her know what you were doing, Mr. Ben. What I was doing is none of your business either. I better see if the children are covered. Yes, sir. Good night, Mr. Ben. Ben and Adeline, Nellie's children, my children. I wish you a happy new year, children, and a decent life. I wish that you'll never be hurt, and that you'll never hurt anybody else. You're going into a wonderful time, the 20th century. It's all yours. I wish you peace and prosperity and happiness and usefulness. Nellie. Nellie. <laughs> Those aren't kids you got, Ben. Those two are just wild Indians. Send them to a reservation. It's not funny. They're driving me straight to the insane asylum. Ice cream, Tootsie Rolls, in and out of here 20 times a day. You know, Ben, what you need is a woman in the house. Yeah, yeah, I've thought about it. Maybe I ought to get married again. I've thought about it a million times. That innocent and casual remark did it. Every crony I knew owned a female relative he wanted to get off his hands and onto mine. <laughs> they finally decided on Mabel Winans. My resistance was very low. But just as I was proposing, I was saved. Saved by the bell. The fire bell. As the second assistant chief, my duty was clear. I fled from Mabel's arms forever. Why? Ma'am, we'll do something. Ma'am, we'll do something. to the ground, Lloyd. It's all gone. We've got to have a bigger fire department. Steam engines, Ben. That's what we need. Steam engines. This just about ruins me. What do you mean, ruins you? You've got your health. You've got two fine children. You still own that corner lot. I just don't have any money to rebuild, Mr. Burge. I'm president of the bank, Ben, and I say it's about time we had a new and modern shop. Now, first off, we need to hire a good architect. At the time, I thought the new shop was too big, too expensive. But as the years went by, Illinois grew so rapidly that I needed two more barbers to help me, and the shop seemed smaller than ever. I just don't understand it, Ben. What's Kaiser Bill want, anyway? Starting a war in Europe. Well, it's too much for me, Doc. But as long as we oh, say, keep out of it... Say, isn't that young Benny there across the street? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm afraid it is. Well, that's Edie Jordan he's with. Yeah, with all the girls in town, my boy has to take up with Ed Jordan's daughter. I don't blame the girl for something her father did. He's had seven jobs since high school. All he's interested in is dancing. <laughs> he's right good at it, Ben. I saw him over at the Elk Smoker. Hey, Pop. Well, here's the other one. I'm busy, Adeline. Hello, Dr. Thomas. Hi, Annie. Pop, this is Homer Price. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Halper? Homer wasn't in a raffle. <laughs> what raffle? Well, don't snap your necktie, Pop. The raffle would take me to the high school dance. So put him in a chair and slick him up so he doesn't look like such a wet smack. Now, what's a wet smack? Um, so put him in a chair and slick him up so he doesn't look like such a wet smack. Now, what's a wet smack? Uh, me, Mr. Halper. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess he can be improved, Adeline. Oh, thanks, Pop. You get the fur-lined bathtub. I'll see you soon, Homer. 
I don't know what this young generation's coming to, Doc. Wet smack, fur-lined bath. Yeah, they'll grow up one of these days. I wonder. I wonder. Hello, Pop. Uh, I'd like a word with you. Excuse me, Homer. Uh, sure, Mr. Halper. Well, Benny, how much? Oh, no, I... I've decided I want to go to Chicago. Well, uh, let's talk about that in the back room. Why Chicago? Well, I finally got my vaudeville act in shape, and I thought if I went to yeah, Chicago... whose idea is this? Edith Jordan's? Well, she's going to be my partner, Pop, and no, no, this is all my idea. You're going to college. You're going to be a doctor. Well, just one thing, Pop. I don't want to be a doctor. In a couple of years, you'll see I'm right. Now, let's have no further discussion about it. Okay, Pop. No further discussion. Benny went away. For more than a year, I didn't see Hyden ahead of him. And then a telegram came. I took the next train out for Chicago. Benny was on the stage, Benny and Edie, headliners. Then later, in his dressing room... Gee, it's good to see you, Pop. Why couldn't I see you before the show? Well, I wanted you to see me in action first. Well? I've seen worse. I don't know why parents have children anyway. <laughs> they ought to poison them at birth. <laughs> you try to raise them as decent people, all they do is break your heart. You miss me, Pop. Why didn't you tell me where you were? Well, you said no more discussion, remember? Yeah, but we finally made it. The big time, Chicago. Don't you think Edie was good? Good? What am I supposed to think of a girl who doesn't have the decency to come home to her own ma's funeral? Well, she didn't know about it until it was too late. She tried to... Oh, come on in, Edie. Pop, I'm in love with this woman. You must be, traipsing all over the country together. Mr. Helper, Benny and I have been married over a year. Is that why you sent for me? Tell me this? Well, not exactly. You see, Pop, I, I have to report to Uncle Sam tomorrow. I've been drafted. Drafted? I see. Edie's going to live in Seville, Illinois until I get back, and I, I hoped you'd take her with you. I'll see that she gets there. Oh, thanks. And, uh... When you get back to town, I'll try and help you get started again. Maybe if you can't be the best doctor in the world, you can be the best dancer. You too old to kiss me goodbye? Pop, I'll never be too old for that. Benny. Benny. So we took the train back to the Illinois, Edie and I... I remembered another train ride in a night like this. The rain on the window and the darkness outside. You hear what the train wheels say then? Chicago, Chicago. Oh, I love you, Ben. I love you so. What are the train wheels saying now, Nellie? If you could have been in Chicago tonight, you'd have been proud. Mighty proud. <laughs> like I'm home again, Mr. Helper. Thanks. Yeah, this place. It's all run down. Nobody's lived here since Mama died. Anything else I can do? No. No, I don't think so. You've never liked me, Mr. Helper, but I didn't make Benny become a dancer. I only told him to do what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And it's not his fault he fell in love with me. i got to get used to thinking about you as a daughter, You'll have to get used to something else, too. You're going to be a grandfather. Does Benny know? No. I didn't want him to worry. But you don't mind if I worry. Good night, Edie. Edie? Yes? Come here. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for everything. Here now, here, here. I can't let you stay here all by yourself. You come on home, stay with me in that line. For God's sake, girl, stop crying. Thank you. You, Jordan, you'll be the death of me yet.
continue with Act Three of Wait Till the Sun Shines, Nellie, in a few moments. You know, sometimes a soldier finds his greatest opportunities for service in something outside the line of duty. Such a man is Sergeant Werner Krenzer. He's been in the Army for eight years. He's known frontline warfare in the Pacific and occupation duty in Japan. As a veteran soldier, he's used to destruction. But he saw destruction through the eyes of a child when he was assigned to the United Nations Civil Assistance Command. This is a unit which provides aid for homeless Korean civilians. Sergeant Krenzer's heart went out to the hungry, sick, frightened children that he found everywhere. And then he got an idea. More than food and shelter, he realized these children needed love. And there were thousands of homeless women refugees wandering around, looking for their children, their families. Krenzer wasn't able to find each mother's own child, but he could ask her to care for a deserted waif. And so, these childless mothers took the motherless children and cared for them. And the women were given hope that their own children might find the same kind of refuge. Even though they still live within the sound of guns and planes, there's new faith and hope in their eyes. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of Wait Till the Sun Shines, Nellie, starring David Wayne as Ben and Gene Peters as Nellie. Nineteen seventeen. So much happened that year. Then off to war, Edie's baby being born. We named her Nellie. And Adeline getting engaged to the Burgess boy. Ben was wounded in the Battle of the Argonne, and they sent him home. He'd never dance again. They saved his leg, but from now on, he'd walk with a limp. Oh, what are you looking so glum for, Pop? I'm home in one piece. I've got Edie and the baby. I'm one of the lucky ones. Say, uh, <laughs> you think you got room for me in the barbershop? Benny, you mean that? <laughs> think your customers could put up with me? You... You just don't know how I've hoped for this. Well, get the sign painter, Pop. We'll have to change that lettering on the window. From now on, it's Ben Halper and Son. What time is it, Pop? Can you see? Uh, close to 7, Edie. Ben say when he'd be home? Well, he said he'd be home for dinner. All this going into Chicago. What's it all about? Oh, I don't know, Pop. He's got a lot of friends there, boys who were with him in the Army. Mm, we've had another gang war in Chicago. You read the papers tonight? Oh, it's just awful. Five men killed. Machine guns. Yeah, let the scum kill the scum. That's one way of getting rid of them. Pop, who's this Mike Carver the police are looking for? Yeah, just a gangster, honey. One of the leaders. Paper says he's... I'm a... home, Edie. Hey. Hey, where are you? We're in the kitchen. And not so loud. You'll wake the baby. Oh. I'm sorry I'm late. I couldn't phone because Matt wanted me to drive out to the country. Where's Evelyn? Dinner at the Burgess. Hungry? Yeah, starved. Good. We'll eat in five minutes. Where were you, dear? Well, uh, that's uh, what I wanted to tell you, both of you. I, I got a little surprise. Well, after two years, I've, I've decided I'm not any good as a barber. Benny. Well, Matt's going to give me a job. Oh? Doing what? The Merchants National Protective Association. It's a... Well, it's an insurance company. Edie, you're not sore? If it's what you want, Benny, it's all right with me. Pop? Well, it was nice while it lasted. You just take care of yourself. Oh, sure, Pop, sure. A few days later, Ben's friend, that Macaulay fellow, came into the shop. I know you're busy, Mr. Halper, but I'd like you to do me a little favor. Glad to. Benny with you? Uh, no, no, he's still in Chicago. There's a friend of mine, Mr. Halper. He'd like you to come up to the hotel and shave him. I told him you had the velvet touch. Sure, sure. As soon as I finish here. You'll make it quick, huh? We well, can't keep the boss waiting. Boss? Who's boss? Mike Carver. I thought you knew. 
We can't keep him waiting. Mike Carver, hmm? Well, if Mr. Carver wants to shave, he can have it. In this chair. I don't think he's going to like that, Mr. Huffer. This chair will be empty only until the next customer comes in. Okay. Okay, I'll tell him. Well, here he is, boss. Meet Benny Halper's old man. How are you? Sit down, Mr. Carver. That son of yours is a smart boy. He works for me. Yes? What kind of work? Insurance, Pop. Protection insurance. The way the country's gone, every business got to have protection. There's only one thing I'd like to know, Mr. Carver. About your boy, huh? No. No, about those men out there on the sidewalk. Before you walked in here, they came in. They looked all around this shop. What were they looking for? Maybe they just want to see your license, Mr. Halper. Maybe they just want to be sure you run a nice, clean establishment. Thanks. That's what I thought. <laughs> Tell you, Pop, that little Nellie, the smartest kid I ever saw in my life. Naturally. And she's going to have everything she wants to, Pop. You wait and see. Uh, Pop, did uh, Edie tell you? Tell me what? Well, uh, the time's come for me to repay you for all the things you've done for me. For all of us. Uh, not that I'll ever really be able to, but... Well, I, I, I've taken a house in Chicago. That's fine, Benny. And Ben Halper Sr. is coming with us. He's going to be a gentleman of leisure. Enjoy life from now on. Every month a big fat check from Julia. Thanks, Benny, but I'll stay on in Seville, Illinois. Alone? Oh, Pop, be sensible. I'm trying to be. Well, Adeline's away at college. She graduates in June and then gets married, and they're going to live in New York. I won't be alone, Benny. I have friends. Well, will you, will you at least make it over? Benny, is it true what it says in the paper? Lots of things in the paper, Pop. About the company you work for. Hiring gangsters to smash and wreck the property of businessmen who won't buy your protection. You believe everything you read? And what's a man like Mike Carver doing in this town? Resting, taking a vacation. He wanted a quiet place, so I recommended Seville, Illinois. He's hiding from what happened in Chicago. Pop, I, I wish I could stay now and talk to you, but, but don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I hope so, Benny. Look, I fought for this country. It owes me something. A good job, a home, a car. This country owes you nothing. Not even the price of a haircut. Good night, Pop. I'll be late getting back. Don't let E wait up. You've been standing there long, Edie. A few minutes. Oh, Pop, I'm scared. I just don't understand him anymore. Uh, if only I knew what to do about it. If only I knew. McCauley, get in here. Yeah, Mr. Carver. That phone call from Chicago, they backed down. The heat's off. We're going back tomorrow. Yeah, you sure called it, boss. Oh, Benny's old man is outside. He wants to talk to you. Well, send them in. Okay, Mr. Halper. You got your razor, Mr. Halper? I could use a shave. No, Mr. Cabo. I'm here about Benny. Smart boy. He stays with me, winds up a big man. If he lives. Lives? Now, what kind of a way is that to talk? Turn him loose, Mr. Carver. Don't let him work for you anymore. You, uh, you talked this over with Benny? No. I want you to do that. Well, I'm going back tomorrow. Suppose I don't take Benny with me. I'd be thankful to you for the rest of my life. Okay, Mr. Halper. But before I go, I'll stop by the shop. Say, 10 o'clock. I want a nice shave. My chair will be waiting for you. You see, I trust you. I figure a good barber can't cut a customer any more than a good knife thrower can hit his woman. Can he? I wouldn't know. I never threw a knife at a woman. <laughs> a real comic, this barber. Just like I said, Mr. Halper, 10 o'clock on the nose. Ah, that towel feels good. I'm going to miss your velvet touch, Pop. Thank you. I, uh, I had a talk with Benny. He don't see things your way. I see. He's got a wife and a baby. His whole future's at stake. So he's decided to string along with me. It's for you, Mr. Ben. Telephone. Excuse me, Mr. Carver. <laughs> Hello? This is Benny, Pop. Is Mike Carver still there? Yes. Listen carefully. Tell him not to go out to his car and to keep away from the window. Some men are after him. They just left the hotel for your shop. 
Where are you? Drugstore. Hey, you gotta hurry. Put Carver in the back room. I'll bring my car up the alley and take him out the back door. The back room? Yes. Right away. I'm sorry, Mr. Carver. Sorry, take your time. Uh, Trooper, will you come in here, please? I want to move something. Yes, Mr. Ben? Uh, back here, the storeroom. Uh, Mr. Ben, what is... Close the door. Don't ask any questions. There's no time. Get everyone in here. Just talk to him quietly and get him in here. Then lie down on the floor, all of you. Yes, sir. I'll get him in. Uh, that's not what I ordered, Trooper. Send the whole shipment back. Harry, you and Fred get in there and help Trooper. Sorry, Mr. Carver. Uh, that's okay. Uh, just give me another towel, will you? Yeah, there's nothing like a hot towel, is there? How's this? Oh, good. Good. That's, that's fine. Under a car? Yes, yes, I guess you did. The way folks drive these days. Yeah, I better hone this place. Here. What happened? They, they, they ran in, Doctor, into the barber shop. They killed Mr. Carver right there in the chair. But Benny, where was Benny? Well, I, I, I'm not sure. I heard him come in the back door. They had a machine gun and some of the bullets. How's he, Doctor? Young Mr. Ben, how's he? Benny's dead, Trooper. They riddled him. <laughs> We buried Benny next to his mother. A few months later, Adeline married Austin Burridge. Nobody thought it unusual that the banker's son was marrying the barber's daughter. Seems like half the town was there to see him off at the railroad station. Goodbye, Austin. Goodbye, Adelaide. Goodbye. Well, Ben, looks like we did it. They're finally married. I guess it doesn't set any new precedents, Mr. Burridge. According to the increase in population statistics, men will always be turning women into wives. <laughs> Can we give you a lift home? Edie's going with us. No, no, thanks. I, I think I'll mosey on by myself. I'd uh, kind of enjoy the walk. Sometimes it seems so long ago, so very long ago, Benny's death. Adeline's marriage. But Edie stayed on in Illinois. Edie and little Nellie. The dearest, the most precious thing in my life. This is going to be a big day in Illinois. Today the town's 50 years old. There's going to be a big parade. And they want us to lead it. Me and Lloyd Slocum. He's Senator Slocum now. And old Doc Thomas and Trooper. And George Oliphant. I've been sitting out here on the porch. They think I've been sleeping, but I haven't been sleeping. Just thinking. Well, I don't know, because you said, well, wake him up. We'll be late for the parade if you don't. Uh, not me, sir. You wake him up. I'll wake him up. Grandpa? Grandpa, wake up. Hello, Nellie. Grandpa, you can't keep the parade waiting. They want us from the barber shop, Ben. Those newspaper photographers from Chicago. They want me to sit in a chair. And you, standing next to me, with a razor. <laughs> Been a long time since I shaved you, Lloyd. And they want you to make a statement, Grandpa. After all, you've been around here almost longer than anybody. What will you tell them? Well, there's nothing to say, honey. Not really. It's a fine town. All in all, I've been happy here. But there's no time for looking back. Come on, Nellie. Let you and me get this parade started. In a moment, our stars will return. But now here's Ken Carpenter. Ken? When a sailor by the name of Patty Mosier was in Pusan, Korea, he saw a little boy collapse on a road because of malnutrition. He found many youngsters and old people dying for lack of nourishment. Having been brought up on a Virginia farm, Patty observed that the Korean soil looked good. Why no vegetables? The answer he found was lack of seeds. So he did something about it. He drew all his cash from the bank, $1,500, bought seeds, and distributed them with the aid of religious missions in the area. Soon, his crusade began to spread. 
and he was helped by contributions from people in the United States who heard about his project. There's no doubt that hundreds of hungry people owe their very lives to this sailor with a heart. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are coming forward for a well-deserved curtain call. David Wayne and Gene Peters. Well, Dave, for a man who made his mark in musical comedy, you've done very little singing in pictures. Well, I suggest you see my latest in Technicolor for 20th Century Fox. Tonight we sing. And what songs do you sing? Well, I don't sing any, but everybody else does. Itzio Pinza, Roberta Peters, Jan Pierce. <laughs> and that's pretty wonderful singing. Gene, we were awfully sorry to kill you off so early in the play tonight. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I just sat there wondering about the Hollywood stars lineup for tomorrow night. Oh. Well, I certainly hope they're lined up at the box office for tonight we sing. Oh, not those stars, David. I mean our baseball team, the Hollywood stars. We're looking forward to your latest picture for 20th Century Fox, Pick Up on South Street, co-starring Richard Widmark. I hear it's something special. Thanks, Irving. And I hear you have something special for next week's show. Yes, next week we're going to repeat a very popular screenplay because we've had so many requests for it and the stars. It's Samuel Goldwyn's distinguished comedy drama... The Bishop's Wife. And starring in the title role, we'll have that distinctive actress, Phyllis Thaxter, and recreating his original role, one of our finest stars, Cary Grant. That will be special, Irving. Good night. Good night. Good night, and all our thanks. Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.